Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome to the Earth's Interior. This video is on the production and discovery of the different layers in the Earth. Now, in terms of earthquakes, when, you, when people hear about an earthquake, the first reaction is to run and hide, get into a safe place, and pray that everything's okay and no one gets hurt. And once it, the earthquake is done and over and the shaking's passed, then you kind of like dust yourself off and see what's going on. Now, other people, in particular certain earth scientists in the uh, 20th century, used those earthquake waves that were recorded in different seismograms. So let's say the earthquake happened over here, right? Here's my earth. And before 1900, there was really just best guesswork into the composition and layers of the Earth's interior. And there were some good ideas, but nothing really substantial, nothing really, nothing scientific they could use as data to prove that there were certain things that were changing. They thought it was all just one big rock, a very homogeneous rock. And the earthquakes, now, um, there was one recent, recently around 1909, I say recently, but around that time, 1909. And there's an earthquake that happened right here, so there'll be the epicenter. and the Earthquake waves would travel through the Earth, it would curve and travel through the Earth, and end up here. And there would be a seismic station right here that would record the shaking. And there was one over here and one over here. And these shakings were recorded in these different locations. And there were two main types of waves that recorded that actually go through the, the center of the Earth or through the Earth's interior. And that is the P wave, stands for primary, and the S wave, which, funny enough, stands for secondary. Now, the P wave is a compressional wave, which means that it goes basically in linear direction, like a, like a, like a, like a, you know, it's, it goes forward and back, forward, back, but it's very linear. Okay, the S wave, I call it like a snake, where it moves like this, like a, like a regular wave would from, from a uh, profile point of view. Is that that wave crest and trough, that kind of frequency, classic wave in physics? That is the S wave. So the P wave is generally the fastest of the earthquake waves, okay, and uh, travels uh, speeds of between uh, six kilometers per second up to you know, 13.5 kilometers per second. So it's a fast wave. And then the S wave is a little bit slower. It's still fast, but it's not as fast as the P wave. And it can go between 1.5 and 3.5 kilometers an hour per second slower than the P wave. So we're still, we're still talking about very quick speeds. So these waves travel very fast through the Earth's interior. And these, these scientists in the early 20th century used these waves to figure out our Earth's interior. So let's start at the, the first scientist that made the first discovery. And it was in 1909, and it was a Croatian, European scientist from Croatia, uh, but then it wasn't Croatia, it was uh, Yugoslavia, but Croatian uh, scientist by the name of Mohorovic. And he basically saw that if this was the crust and the earthquake happened here, here's the epicenter, and here are the seismic stations, and here is the mantle that we now know of. And these earthquake waves would go and we have these two different waves he saw by recording the distance and the time of arrival and distance from the epicenter he could figure out the velocity okay speed over time so he could figure out the velocity of those waves and he realized that the red wave that was just going through the crust was going through at six kilometers per second. So still very fast. And then the, the green one that would actually enter a 
deeper area in the Earth's interior was going at a faster speed. It was actually increased. It was the same. It was the same um, P wave. It was the same P wave, but it was going faster. It was going eight kilometers every second. So he saw that at a certain depth, on average, it's around 50 kilometers down or depth. There was a discontinuity, which was a, a sharp, abrupt change in the speed of these seismic waves that were being released by the earthquake. So he did some experiments on the surface, obviously, because you can't go that deep to take, you know, real time experiments at that location. You have to test on the surface and then apply it to the Earth's interior because we know that physics and chemistry and math are pretty much, you know, universal constants, especially math, where what happens on the surface, in, you know, to replicate the, the um, experiment would happen elsewhere as well. So he looked different kinds of materials and different kinds of rock. And he found that the, um, the dense of the rock the denser the rock, the faster the seismic waves travel. So he applied it to what he found in the Earth's interior with the earthquakes, and he found that there was a distinct change in velocity when the waves go below or a depth of over generally 50 kilometers. And he then said that there was a there was the start of different layers of the Earth. It wasn't just all the same rock. There were different layers to our Earth, and he could prove it using these seismic waves. So the first one was eloquently called the Moho because I guess his last name was kind of uh, a longer last name and difficult to pronounce. So we called it the Moho, which is called the M discontinuity, and that was in 1909. So the Moho is the the boundary between the crust and the mantle. Now, now we know it as the crust and lithosphere. And then the mantle is separated into different sections which we'll get into. But the most important thing is the velocity change, the discontinuity. And the data that he found was then used by other scientists to further explore the Earth's interior. The next scientist to further the uh, discovery of our Earth's interior was a guy named Gutenberg. Now, he was German, and in 1914, he basically discovered um, the boundary between the mantle and the core, which is roughly 2,700 kilometers uh, deep from the surface. And he saw that there was a uh, refracting element to the waves. Now, that means that the waves bend. That, again, means that there is a change in velocity. The more they bend, the slower they go. And they were bending and, and, and changing velocity when they reached the core. Now, he found that there was a, uh, the P waves would change velocity. But the S waves that moved like a snake, they stopped. They stopped uh, progressing through the Earth's interior. It was like they hit a wall that they couldn't go through. So the S waves kind of stopped abruptly at the core boundary, core mantle boundary, whereas the P waves would continue through and they would change velocity. They would change velocity. And what we see is the main difference between the mantle and the core. And the last main boundary or discontinuity found was in 1936 by a Danish um, scientist called Lehman. And basically, before 1936, everyone thought the core was just one single core, Lehman came around and looked in more detail at the seismic waves and saw again that the P wave, because there's no S waves inside the core because they're stopped at the boundary based on the propagation and energy use of the S wave. We'll get that in more detail um, in earthquakes. But 
the uh, P waves again would refract or bend in a certain way through the outer core and then change again through the inner core. So it would change velocity, the P wave, again through the, the, the central most part of the core. So then Lehman uh, discovered there were two layers within our core. And again, based on the velocity change of the P wave, basically ch uh, looked at and discovered the difference in density density between the two layers. Now again to the outer core in more detail in the future video and the same with the inner core but there was uh, the discovery of these by Lehman uh, and also by Gutenberg uh, in 1940 and 1936 respectively. So these seismic waves and these scientists that were amazingly uh, 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 able to discover these changes in density and velocities of waves kind of pioneered the understanding of our Earth's interior and propelled the, the, the subject to further discoveries um, along the way. So if you like this, uh, please subscribe to the uh, classroom, the uh, channel will be much appreciated and leave a comment if you want.